The winner is yes. Cotabato City makes history with yes to Bangsamoro organic law referendum. Some analysts see tough challenges ahead for the Moro Islamic Liberation Front despite the progress of the Bangsamoro organic law. And Manila Hospital closes emergency room over suspected Meningo Coxima case. Good evening, Cotabato City makes history after majority of its residents voted yes to the ratification of the Bangsamoro organic law. This is despite threats and violence that marred the plebiscite. Dante Amento will tell us why. The winner is yes, garnering 36,682. It was an emotional moment for the people of Cotabato City when the Commission on Elections proclaimed the victory of yes votes in the plebiscite for the ratification of the Bangsamoro Organic Law. Excited residents outside the Sharif Kabungsuan Cultural Complex roared with joy when they heard the announcement. Even those who served in the canvassing area became emotional a series of sleepless nights preparing for the referendum finally paid off. Based on the final result of the canvassing from the City Board of Canvassers, 36,682 voted yes, while 24,994 voted no to the ratification of BOL. Despite delays, the Comelec was satisfied with the conduct of plebiscite. Nagkaroon ng delay kasi yung mga teachers hindi agad na-receive dahil underman talaga yung office namin. The CPBOC will immediately submit certificates of canvas and summary of votes to the Comelec Central Office in Intramuros, Manila. Meanwhile, Cotabato City Mayor Cynthia Guiani Sayadis said she would contest the result of Monday's plebiscite as the vote was marred by violence and threats coming from MILF supporters. Residents and areas included in the proposed Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao hope their votes will not be in vain as they aspire for development under the new law. It was a historic decision for the people of Cotabato City after years of resistance to autonomy. The city twice rejected the proposal in two plebiscites, held in 1989 and 2001. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue, Philippines. The Commission on Elections has once again deferred the canvassing of votes on the recent Bangsamoro Organic Law plebiscite. This is because there are no certificates of canvas which arrived yet at the Comelec Central Office in Intramuros, Manila. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. The National Plebiscite Board of Canvassers or NPBOC has decided to once again defer the canvassing of votes of yesterday's Bangsamoro Organic Law Plebiscite. The canvassing which should have happened at 1 p.m. today will just resume tomorrow at 2 p.m. The NPBOC still is awaiting for three certificates of canvas from the Regional Plebiscite Board of Canvassers of the ARMM, the Provincial Plebiscite Board of Canvassers of Basilan, and the certificates of canvas in Isabela City in Basilan. Acting Election Officer of Cotabato City, Attorney Romel Rama, already had a certificate of canvas of Cotabato City received at the Palacio del Gobernador in Intramuros, Manila. According to Comelec Commission Secretary Attorney Consuelo Diola, it is just normal that COCs do not immediately arrive at the Comelec Central Office as counting of votes are done manually. Comelec reiterated that there are no delays in the transmittal of COCs from the areas where the plebiscite were held to the Palacio del Gobernador in Intramuros, Manila. Today we will be expecting the Cotabato City uh, Chairman uh, to arrive today this afternoon. There's really actually no delay. It's just a matter of the, the regular course of a manual, manual canvas. So we don't think it's a delay. So see you tomorrow at 2 p.m. Sa Isabela, meron pa atang mahigit 40 na, na returns na hindi pa nakakanvas. So uh, meron pang mga ongoing na, na canvas. Meron pang pending sa regional uh, canvas din. So, um, kaya, kaya nga tayo hindi magpukuntin ng national canvas today kasi ang ini-expect lang naman talaga today is Cotabato City. Meanwhile, Comelec spokesman Director James Jimenez admitted that there was a clerical error that happened in the canvassing of certificates for the BOL in Cotabato City. The number of registered voters and actual votes tallied were much lower than what Director Jimenez announced. 
In the COC, there were only 71,963 registered voters and 39,024 votes cast in Cotabato City, compared to the 113,751 registered voters and 61,676 votes cast announced by Director Jimenez. However, Director Jimenez said it can still be corrected by the National Plebiscite Board of Canvassers and will not affect the outcome of the BOL plebiscite. It's clear to me at least, no? na this is a manifest error. Nagkaroon lang ng clerical error. It happens uh, in every election na small errors like this are made. I think what's more relevant is the, the county. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Some analysts believe that the Moro Islamic Liberation Front is still facing challenges despite the progress of Bangsamoro Organic Law. Nel Maribuho tells us why. The passage of the Bangsamoro Organic Law is being counted upon to resolve the decades-long armed conflict in Mindanao region. Under the BOL, a more powerful Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao will replace the current Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Cotabato City has spoken with a resounding yes vote in Tuesday's plebiscite for the ratification of BOL. This automatically includes Cotabato City in the formation of BARM, which will be headed by an 80-member Bangsamoro Transition Authority until the year 2022 when the first election for the leadership of a parliament will be held. The BTA members are to be appointed by President Rodrigo Duterte himself. It is expected that majority of the members will come from the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. Nevertheless, according to Ramon Casiple, Executive Director of the Institute for Political and Electoral Reform, the MILF still has bigger challenges ahead of them, particularly during the transition period. BTA pa lang, coalition government na yan. They will have to talk to a lot of people. Some of them are political enemies and they have to reach consensus. That's a problem of statesmanship. It's not anymore na partisan ka lang simple, meron kang uh, sariling gusto mangyari. Ito yung shift sa thinking. Eh. You have to think as ikaw na ngayon ang leader ng buong rehiyon. For peace and conflict analyst Francisco Lara Jr., the existence of private armed groups in Mindanao poses another challenge for the BTA. There's been a lot of improvement. But the power of clans and the power of armed groups to dictate developments at the local level in critical communities remain and that will be the biggest challenge as well for the Bangsamoro Transition Authority. When the second plebiscite in other parts of the Mindanao concludes on February 6, it will be confirmed which areas will form the new territories under BARM. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Cotabato City. In other news, the management of Gat Andres Bonifacio Memorial Medical Center in Tondo, Manila has temporarily closed their emergency room after a patient was rushed in the hospital due to suspected Meningo Coxima case. John Nano tells us why. The hospital management of Gat Andres Bonifacio Memorial Medical Center in Tondo, Manila has temporarily suspended admitting patients in their emergency room. This was due to a 55-year-old female patient that was rushed to the hospital yesterday due to suspected case of meningococcemia. According to the Department of Health, meningococcemia is a bacterial disease that can easily be transferred through close contact with a patient suffering from meningococcal infection. The common symptoms of meningococcemia is high fever, headache, cough, sore throat, a body pain, a vomiting, and rashes. Ang meningococcemia is bacteria. It can be spread through coughing, through kissing. So may pagka intimate siya. Mm -hmm. no? And uh, since droplet siya, so pag nag-cough out, so pag nag-cough ka, so may tatalsik na laway, no? yung mga droplets. Kung ano yung ma-settle doon, upang kami nito. Although this is just a suspected case of meningococcemia, the hospital decided to temporarily close their emergency room to undergo fumigation and disinfection. This is to assure that bacteria will not spread in the hospital. As of now, the doctors are still waiting for the results of the patient's laboratory tests and blood culture, but also confirm that the patient is in critical condition. The so, status po naman ngayon is uh, yung patient is naka-isolate na doon. Uh, nagawa na po namin lahat ng mga precautions na kailangan 
uh, para sa mga staff namin, para sa mga patients na nandun. For now, ang status ng patient is in critical condition. Despite of the situation, the Gat Andres Bonifacio Memorial Medical Center maintains that their normal operation, including their outpatient department, is business as usual. They are expecting to resume the operation of the emergency room by tomorrow. Joan Nano, UN TV News and Rescue, Manila. Local officials say that Manila Zoo's closure due to untreated sewage is targeted to last for three to four months. However, some zoo personnel are not too worried over the park's temporary closure. Monokson tells us why. The Manila City Hall ordered on Tuesday the immediate closure of Manila Zoo. The city government cited the amusement park's lack of sewage treatment facility, causing the wastewater and animal discharges to flow directly to Manila Bay. On Wednesday, the City Engineering Office and the Public Recreations Bureau made rounds in the park to assess the area and identify possible location to where the treatment plant will be erected. City engineers plan to construct new septic tanks for public toilets and the composting sites for animal discharges. It will take about three to four months to complete all the drainage facility construction works, according to officials. Um, meron na po siyang mga septic tank actually. Okay. Pero hindi pa siya nakakonek sa proper discharge niya sa Maynilad. Several stakeholders say they fully understand that the sewage works have to push through, though they admit that it will affect their income. Hindi ko nga po kasi alam, kapapasok ko lang din po kasi ngayon, nabigla lang po ako kahapon na... Pero yung mga vendors na nagbebenta ng mga laruan or ng uh, uh, mga souvenir items, sila yung magpa-close na. Some park personnel, meanwhile, say they are not worried because somehow they will still receive their monthly salary. Adjet naman po dyan sa mga empleyado. Kaya steady lang din po kami, magtatrabaho pa rin kami. The iconic family destination houses around 600 different species of animals. The most famous is Mali, an Asian elephant dubbed as the world's loneliest elephant and the only captive elephant in the Philippines. Mali is now 45 years old and has been in captivity all her lifetime. Manila Zoo was ordered closed after the Department of Environment and Natural Resources tagged it as a major pollutant of Manila Bay. Coinciding with its closure, the DNR directed all establishments near and around Manila Bay to construct their respective sewage treatment facility. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Netflix movie Roma and British historical Rob the Favorite from Fox Searchlight led nominations for the Oscars on Tuesday with 10 nods apiece. They will compete for the top prize of Best Picture with A Star is Born, Black Panther, Green Book, Black Clansman, Vice, and rock musical Bohemian Rhapsody. The Marvel blockbuster is the first superhero movie ever to be nominated for Best Picture. The Oscars, the highest awards in the movie industry, will be handed out in Hollywood on February 24. Up next on Y News. Pistol allegedly used in the murder of Congressman Rodel Batokabe recovered from a fish pond in Ligao City, Albay. Cebu police beefs up security following an ambush that injured a Cebu town mayor and killed three others. And President Rodrigo Duterte to leave Congress to decide on the minimum age of criminal responsibility, according to Malacanya. Thank you for keeping me company in the first part of Y News. More reasons behind the stories with Angelo Castro III and William Pio after this quick break. I'm Angela Lagunsad. Good evening. Welcome back to Y News. We pick up from where uh, Angela Lagunsad left off. I'm Angelo Diego Castro III. And here are the headlines.
Dalaga mayor accused of masterminding the murder of Congressman Batokabe rushed to the hospital following his arrest for illegal possession of firearms. Revision of ballots in the poll protest for former Senator Bongbong Marcos against Vice President Lenny Robredo is now nearing completion, according to the Supreme Court. Yung, yung bata, uh, limited yung rights niya to be independent, but foul yung kanyang status as a criminal, according to the law. You know, how distorted is that thinking, di ba? And a law expert believes the proposal to lower the minimum age of criminal responsibility violates several children's rights. Dalagal by Mayor Carlwyn Baldo, accused of masterminding the murder of Ako Bicol Party List Representative Rodel Batokabe was rushed to the hospital following his arrest for illegal possession of firearms. Meanwhile, authorities are examining another weapon that was recovered from a fish pond, fish pond in Ligao City. Here's why from Lea Ilagan. A mayor tag as the main suspect in the killing of Ako Bicol Party List Representative Rodel Batokabe was brought to the hospital on Tuesday several hours after his arrest for illegal possession of firearms. Police confirmed that Daraga Albay Mayor Carlwin Baldo was admitted to the USD hospital around 11 in the evening Tuesday after complaining of difficulty in breathing inside his detention cell. Baldo has a history of asthma. As per recommendation ng medical team po ng uh, Regional Health Service 5, dahil nga po nagkaroon ng allergic reaction at na tinamaan po yata yung parang asma niya dahil po dun sa detention niya. Eh. I think uh, parang sinasabi nila yung amoy ng katuldo. Baldo is currently facing charges after authorities seized from his residence two caliber 45 guns, Uzi magazine, and grenade launcher ammunitions. CIDG Director, Police Chief Superintendent Amador Corpus, hopes that the court will rule in favor of their case as the pieces of evidence they have gathered so far match the suspect's statements against the mayor. May violations po, ano? then uh, again, uh, disposition po ng court yan, and we hope uh, we'll have a good disposition. The search warrants was implemented properly. Corpus also reveals that the PNP Crime Laboratory in Region 5 is currently conducting ballistics and cross-matching examinations on a caliber 45 pistol that was recovered from a fish pond in Porok 3, Barangay Busay in Ligao City, Albay. The gun is believed to be the weapon that assailant Henry Yuson alias Rumel said got jammed during the assassination of Batukabe forcing him to use his military-issued firearm. Yuson added that he gave the jumped weapon to Christopher Nabal alias Tuping, who disposed it to the fish pond. According to the witness, ito yung ginamit na baril ni Henry Yuson na nag-jump. Then, uh, nung nag-jump nga itong 45 na ito, pero pumutok ito, nag-jump lang din. Binunot niya yung caliber 14 na formerly issued para niya. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krami. The Philippine National Police deploys a group of security personnel for Cebu Town Mayor Lacambini Reluya, who was hurt in an ambush on Tuesday. Police investigators are looking at politics as one of the possible motives for the gun attack. Gladys Tuabi tells us why. San Fernando Town Mayor Lacambini Reluya is currently being treated at a local hospital in Cebu after sustaining gunshot wounds in an ambush in Talise City. The gun attack occurred around 5.30 p.m. on Tuesday when a group of unidentified assailants on board a white vehicle waylaid and fired at the mayor's van while the victims were traversing Barangay Linao. Riluya survived the attack with two of her staff, Giovanni Perez and Tolentin Jeffer. But her husband, Ricardo Riluya Jr., driver Alan Bayot, and local official Ricky Monterona were killed on the spot. The mayor's husband was the president of the Association of Barangay Councils in San Fernando. A special task group has been formed by the police regional office 7 to probe the attack. I told them that aside the checkpoints established, Kinahanglan, uh, yung witnesses sa lugar. 
makapag-canvas sila dito. Plus the CCTV, photo importante sa mo. Police investigators are looking at politics as one of the possible motives for the ambush after Iluya expressed belief that the incident was politically motivated. Cebu police will also beef up the security being provided to Riluya and her aides. In every election ata na, na, na sila, pinwigod sila na i-threats, pinwigod sila na alanganin. Karun lang, istorya niya, na, na, medyo nagkuhan siya na incumbent niya siya, but they are receiving threats, na siya gihatag ng mga pangalan, so we'll investigate them. Following the attack, the San Fernando town has been placed under orange code and control of the Commission on Elections due to intense political rivalry and presence of armed groups. Gladys Tuabi, UNTV News and Rescue, Cebu. President Rodrigo Duterte is leaving to Congress the determination of a minimum age of criminal liability according to Malacanang. This is despite the president's outrage after learning about drug syndicates' use of children as young as 6, 9, and 14 in illegal activities. Rosalie Cos tells us why. President Rodrigo Duterte once again warned syndicates that the campaign of the government against illegal drugs will remain relentless. During the annual assembly of the local leaders in Lucena City, Quezon on Tuesday, Duterte emphasized that as the chief executive, it is his mandate to protect the Filipino people and the nation from destruction. Duterte also expressed his outrage after learning about children as young as 6, 9, and 14 years being used by syndicates in illegal drug operations. Pag sinira mo ang bayan ko, talagang magwawala ako. Kaya ang nangyari noong five days ago, ang nagmimaintain ngayon ng siyabo ang mga bata. Kung may parokyano ang matkita niya at naghahanap, dadalhin nila doon, pahititin nila, sila na ang kukubra, pati ang mga bata, shoot na rin sila. As young as 6, 8, 9, 14. Kita mo ginagawa ng mga ulo. The president made the statement a day after the House Justice Committee approved a bill seeking to lower the minimum age of criminal responsibility to nine years old. Duterte has been pushing the lowering of minimum age of criminal liability, saying the current law shielding minors from criminal prosecution has created a generation of criminals. However, he has yet to specify which age should be set as the minimum age of criminal responsibility. According to Malacanang, the president is leaving the Congress to decide on the matter. Again, the, the president will not interfere because that's the lawmaker's job. I will not question that. Bahala sila. Basta gusto ni Presidente ayaw niya yung 15, definitely. Rosa Licoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. A constitutional law expert believes that the proposal to lower the minimum age of criminal responsibility will violate several children's rights. My Bermudez will tell us why. Dina strictly implements in her store the practice of not selling cigarettes and liquors to minors. But she said that there are still those who would plead to her and some even act as adults just to purchase the said items. Pabili ate ng sigarilyo, Ito yung makita mo, naka-uniform pa tapos, estudyante, tapos bata pa. Tapos biglang nasabihin ko, ay hindi ako nagbibenta sa mga minor de edad, lalo na estudyante ka pa. Tapos biglang mumurahin ka, tapos sasabihin para sigarilyo lang, ganyan, di ka ano, ano naman, ganyan. Professor Tony Lavinia, an expert in constitutional law, said if minors are prohibited to purchase cigarettes and liquors, enter into contracts, be employed, or participate in national elections, same views must be shared by lawmakers on the issue of lowering the minimum age of criminal responsibility from 15 to 9 years old, which was swiftly passed in the House committee level. Yung, yung bata, uh, limited yung rights niya to be independent, but full yung kanyang status as a criminal, according to the law. How, how, how distorting is that thinking? How distorted is that thinking, di ba? Our law gives you full rights only when you're 18, 
di ba? Dapat talaga, mas sa, sa, sa akin, I would be more radical na pangilin ng law. Dapat dun yung start ng discernment sa 18. Kasi yun na yung legal, legal, ano natin. Pero may consistency tayo, di ba? Lavinia added that several rights will be curtailed by the proposal such as due process and can be a form of inhumane punishment. This can also be contradictory to the international conventions signed by the Philippines such as the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. First of all, the constitutional ano, no, right to due process uh, for children, di ba? Uh, children um, are children and have to be treated as children. Um, and when you uh, now make them adults, di ba? Uh, for purpose of crime, that that's that's a violation of the constitution. Of course, this amends, uh, um, ano, no, this amends um, several provisions due to juvenile delinquency acts. Uh, sa uh, uh, yung, yung pangilin, yung tawag din ng pangilin ng law, inamed din, din ito, di ba? So, so, that too is amended um, and will change completely the situation, the legal status of children. The said bill was also questioned by the young people themselves. Kahit po sabihin natin na may isip na po yung bata na yun, what if po kung may nag-provoke lang po sa kanila na gawin nyo or labag sa loob po nila? Paano na lang kung dumating po yung um, panahon na lumaki man sila and then malalaman nila sa iba na kriminal yung tawag sa kanila? Hindi ba parang, um, parang hindi siya magandang tag para sa kanila? Sobrang nakakabahala na gano'n na lang tayo tinitingnan ng gobyerno tapos parang wala naman tayong magawa. Tapos ang dami ding mga sumusuporta sa ganong idea ng gobyerno kaya sobrang nakakabahala. Sana yung mga batas na ginagawa nila in favor sa lahat ng mga mamamayan natin dito sa Pilipinas kasi minsan nagdi-decide sila na ano, nagdi-decide sila hindi nila naiisip yung ibang ma yung kapakanan ng iba kagaya naming mga teenagers ngayon saka, sa sa uh, generation natin. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The committee level in the House of Representatives has approved the bill seeking to lower the minimum age of criminal responsibility. The Bible, however, views the matter differently. Let's find out from this report. If the Bible would be the basis, it is an injustice to hold a nine-year-old child accountable for the sins or crimes he or she committed. According to international televangelist Brother Eli Soriano, God lets a person decide for himself or herself when he or she has already passed the puberty stage. Unang Corinto yan, 736. Yung pag-aasawa is one of the major decisions na maaaring gawin ng tao. Ibinigay ng Diyos yun sa uh, katamtamang gulang. Kung titignan natin sa Ingles, if she passed the flower of her age, Pagkalampas nung age of puberty, inaalaw na ng Diyos na mag ng isang tao. Pinapayagan na ang magulang na ang kanyang anak mag sa kanyang sarili. Brother Ellie added that only those who are already 20 years old and above can be held responsible for their actions. This is also supported by scientific findings. Meron po ritong sinasabi ang isang professor, particularly Professor Nicholas Makintos who chaired the working group that compiled the study, there's now inco incontrovertible evidence that the brain continues to develop throughout adolescence. He said some regions of the brain, including parts responsible for decision-making and impulse control, are not fully mature until at least the age of 20. When you can ha hold uh, a child in full responsibility of his actions, you must pass the age 20. That's why sa Biblia, 20 and below, inabsuelto ng Diyos dun sa mga Israelita. For the international televangelist, if young children commit mistakes, this is because of several factors such as life circumstances, environment, culture, and religion. Hence, it is wrong to hold children age 9 years old liable for their mistakes. Kung magbabatay tayo sa may-ari ng ating being, yung nakakaalam ng ating mga kaisipan, yung mga emosyon natin, para sa Diyos ang bata, 20 years old below, cannot be held fully liable. I'm saying, 
cannot be held fully liable of his or her sins. Inabsuel to nga ng Diyos eh, yung mga kasalanang nagawa nila. Alam kasi ng Diyos ang circumstances because of the way their parents are bringing them up. Maaring may mga pagkukulang sa party ng magulang. Kaya hindi iniatang doon sa bata, 20 years and below. At binigyan ng Diyos ang bata sa kanyang salita ng karapatang mag-decide sa kanyang sarili if she or he passed the flower of her age according to the Bible. He also said that the parents of the children who are in conflict with the law are the ones who should be held responsible because the Bible says they should be the one to guide their children to righteousness. E para atangan natin yung siyam na taong bata ng krimen at tawagin ng kriminal. Ano malay natin yun ay insinuated by the culture, by the environment, by some other people. Hindi ang dapat ang bata ang malagot nun. Maaari dapat panagutin siguro ang mga, mga kasama ng bata, magulang, na hindi nagtuturo sa kanilang mga anak. Walang disiplina kasi ang anak, ang bata nasa total disiplina ng magulang eh. 22.6 of the book of Proverbs, train up a child the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Turuan mo ang bata sa daang nararapat niyang lakaran. Kaya ang bata nasa pangangalaga ng magulang. Rosa Licoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives has revised its version of the proposed Minimum age of criminal liability from 9 to 12 years old. Lawmakers passed the bill on second reading within two session days through a viva voce voting or a vote of yes and nays on Wednesday. The House leadership earlier said they target to pass the bill on third reading as soon as possible. The ballot recount in three pilot provinces identified in the electoral protest filed by former Senator Bongbong Marcos against Vice President Lenny Robredo is nearing its end, according to the Presidential Electoral Tribunal. Grace Cassin tells us why. The Presidential Electoral Tribunal is set to resume on January 28 the ballot recount in the pilot provinces identified in the petition filed by former Senator Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. questioning Vice President Lenny Robredo's victory in the 2016 elections. The PT temporarily suspended the recount last January 21 due to wet or damaged ballots. The tribunal said the revision of ballots that began last April 2018 is nearing its end after recounting almost all of the ballots from Camarines Sur, Iloilo, and Negros Oriental. Under Rule 65 of the PET, the tribunal may dismiss the protest if Marcos fails to make his case. But if tribunal sees probable cause in the result of the recount, it may move forward with the remaining provinces identified in the protest. According to Marcos Legal Counsel Attorney George Irwin Garcia, the recount must end so the people will see who is the true winner in the vice presidential race. But according to Attorney Romodo Macalintal, election lawyer of Robredo, the petition of Marcos is already dead, saying the vice president even gained additional votes during the recount. Walang recovery ang nagawa ni Mr. Marcos. Sabi na rin sila noon ng manifestation na wala naman silang isasubmit ng mga testimonial evidence tungkol sa bagay na yan. So kung mag re kami sa mga ballot count lang, ay game over na talaga yan. In the four election protests that were previously filed by late Senator Miriam Defensor Santiago, Fernando Poe Jr., Lauren Legarda, and Mar Rojas, none of these were able to reach the conclusion of the revision or recount of ballots. Grace Cassid, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. A senatorial aspirant sets to push education reforms in the Senate. As a former education undersecretary, he believes that it is the obligation of the government to protect the children. May Bermudez will tell us why. Senatorial aspirant and former DepEd undersecretary Butch Valdez takes the seat and answers the public's questions in the program Get It Straight with Daniel Razon earlier. Valdez is a founder of the movement Katipunan ng Demokratikong Pilipino, established in 2003. It is a political party which aims to support the chief executive in his programs and goals. 
KDP was also established to formulate solutions to change political landscape and formally end the issue of political dynasty. Another platform being pushed by the party is the suspension of the implementation of the Electric Power Industry Reform Act, also known as EPIRA Law, which they say suppressed the poor. But as a former official of the Education Department, one of the platforms he is set to prioritize is the reformation of the education sector in the country. Kung kayo ay magiging senador, ano ang mga susulong ninyong uh, mga panukala para to improve the quality of our education? Ang, ang dadaan po sa ating educational system must be ready, productive citizens when it when the time comes. Kung ang national objective natin uh, magpadala ng mga tao sa ibang bansa, katulad ng ating mga kaibigan dito, no? and then that, let, let's do that and we will pattern our educational system towards that. Valdez also believes it is the state's obligation to protect children so it is a must to check the intention of lawmakers in lowering the minimum age of criminal liability to 9 years old. Sa akin pong paningin, ito pong bagong batas. Whatever their, whatever their intentions were, no? kasi ginagamit sa droga, ganyan. Uh, it is a responsibility of the state to help those parents rear their children properly. Not to punish them. Kayang-kaya po natin bintangan yung magulang kung yung bata naging snatcher at nine years old. Kasalanan ng mga magulang. Hindi natin po naisip na marahil kasalanan po ng Estado na yung buhay ng magulang ay mahira. May Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Senatorial candidate Attorney Jose Manuel Chel Diocno has filed a petition seeking the Supreme Court not to allow the third martial law extension in Mindanao. In his 17-page petition, Jokno argues that harassment and human rights violations in Luma tribes have become rampant since the declaration of martial law in the region. He also cited various cases of abduction of Manawa teachers and students as well as attacks in Lumad schools because they are being accused as members of the New People's Army. This is the fourth petition filed in the Supreme Court against the extension of martial law in Mindanao. The Supreme Court is set to hold their two-day oral argument next week to tackle the constitutional basis of extending martial law in the region. Two singing hopefuls hailing from Metro Manila advance to the second semi-final round of the Wish Covery Season 2, The Singer and the Song. Mirasol Abogodil tells us why. Top four singing bets from Camp Junji Marcelo faced off in a heated vocal showdown as Wish Covery Season 2, The Singer and the Song kicked off the first round of semi-finals on Tuesday. These are Rhea Basco. Ira Asuncion. Alia Cadelinha. And Cyrilene Salud. Also joining the intense sing-off is wildcard Gracelyn Espinesin, who represents La Verdad College, Kaluokan. All contenders have stepped up their game, according to composer Wish Cover Junji, making it hard for him to pick his camp's representative for the next semi-final phase. But in the end, he selected Rhea Basco and Alia Cadelinha as the winners of this round. Junji explained that Basco has been a trailblazer since the online contest began. and Cadillinha's singing prowess could rival other contenders.
think I would have to give uh, it to two people who might put Camp Junzi into that level na pwedeng kumampit sa iba. And again, that is not to say the other three are the lesser kind. It's just not the perfect fit for what I am looking for. Unang-una, hindi po lahat talaga nakakanta sa bus. And sa dinami-dami po namin na nag-audition, isa po ako sa napili na makakanta dun sa Wish Bus po. Thank you kasi binibigyan niyo kami ng chance na hindi lang yung mga talagang sikat na singers yung nakakakanta dun, pati kami na pwedeng kumanta sa Wish Bus. So, thank you po, Wish 107.5. Meanwhile, the semi-finalists and a wild card from the camp of Top Susara will have their vocal showdown later tonight. Mirasol Abugadil, UNTV News and Rescue. Up next on Y News. They would then beat up all the men, including boys as young as 11 years, and then ask them to run or arrest them. Human rights body accuses Zimbabwean security forces of systematic torture amid violent protests over steep oil price hike. Search continues for the missing plane carrying soccer star Emiliano Sala. And Serena Williams gets knocked out after holding match points with Karolina Pliskova during Australian Open quarterfinals. And those are the reasons behind the stories in the second part of our newscast. Y News returns with William Theo. Amang Ilocas, the third good evening.